Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at Pixel Film Studio's Auto Tracker 2 for Final Cut Pro 10. And we're going to be having a look at how you can track easily the position, rotation, the scale of different objects, and then attach text or graphics um, to those tracks that you've created. Now, if you're brand new to Final Cut Pro 10 and you're looking for tutorials or tutorial views into Final Cut Pro 10, then you'll find lots here on the channel. So please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button to get an update whenever I post a new video. But without further ado, we're going to dive straight in and have a look at how we work with the Pixel Film Studios Auto Tracker 2 plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing we're going to do is just drop down a video clip onto our timeline. So we've got this uh, drone footage um, of a boat on a river. And basically we're going to highlight this top boat here uh, with a red circle. So we're going to use the Pixel Film Studios Auto Tracker to do the tracking. And then we're going to go ahead and use some of the other built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro to create a circle around this particular part of the video. So the first thing to do is to bring up our effects panel, which is where we can find our Pixel Film Studios Auto Tracker. So we'll dive in here. And basically we've got three options for the auto tracker. So if you scroll down, you'll find it listed under Pixel Film Studios, FCPX Auto Tracker. And we can basically use either a drop zone, um, which means we can select either another video or another image, um, or we can use a graphic that's on our timeline, and that's what we're gonna do here. Um, or we can use a drop zone and text, or just text on its own. Now there's not a lot of editing options for the text here. So I'd recommend if you want to kind of control the text that you're going to track along with your video, um, then use the drop zone anyway, and then you can connect it to a piece of text on the timeline. So we're going to drag the drop zone version on here. And then straight away, what we want to do is jump up to our inspector at the top right. If you don't see your inspector, come to window, show in workspace and inspector. And then in here we have the, the track editor and we can come to the other settings in a minute. So we'll click the track editor here up in the inspector. And then once we're in here, we've got a few controls that we can work with. So I'm gonna zoom out of this video a little bit so we can see our boat here. And you wanna find a point in your video where the subject you're tracking is the most visible. So basically, throughout most of this video, the boat is pretty visible. And we've got two options for the shape that we use to track with here. We can use a rectangle or a square, um, or we can draw out a circle. So we're going to stick with the rectangle shape and we're going to pull this up here and match this um, as best we can to our boat. So we want to basically make sure we catch all of the area of this boat here. So once we've done that, we're going to do two tracks here because we're actually seven seconds into the timeline. So the track controls down here allow us to track backwards and forward. So I'm going to track the reverse first of all. So once we've finished tracking backwards, what you'll see here in the timeline is all of our keyframes that have been added. So we can zoom in um, on our timeline here to kind of see those individually. And if at any point in time uh, through your track, the track slips out of place, um, you want to move back to a spot where the track is in place, um, try and adjust and then see if it will track forward from that point. Otherwise, you might need to keyframe some offsets um, in your tracking. So we're gonna come ahead to here and we'll now, from this point on, use the track forward button. So we can start in the middle of a clip and then track backwards and forwards and we'll hit the track button. So once your tracking is finished, you can kind of scrub through here and make sure everything follows along nicely um, if you didn't watch along as the track was uh, happening. Um, and then basically what we want to do now is click export data and that will export our tracking data um, to the keyframes in our auto tracker plugin in the inspector. So once that data um, has exported, I'm just going to hit Shift and Z here, then basically you won't really notice any change in your video yet. We now need to set up the graphic that we're going to um, get to follow our video. So you can see um, in here as we scrub through the on-screen controller um, shows where we're centered um, as we kind of move through the track. And we're going to come up to the generators at the top left here, and we're going to select from our generators here an element 
So we're gonna jump in and choose one of these shapes. So basically, uh, we're gonna use a circle shape and we'll just drag it up above our boats here. And with the circle shape, we're going to come to our options up here. I'm gonna increase the width of my outline a bit, turn off the fill, and then we can also use the transform controls to resize and position that circle um, so that we're happy with the width of the, the outline as well. So I'm gonna increase my outline width just a little bit more so it's nice and visible here. So basically once that's set up at a certain point in your track, we're gonna move this across to the end of our sequence here. And I'm gonna reselect my tracked piece of footage. And I'm gonna scroll down here and turn on the drop zone under tracked group controls. So we'll see that gray box will pop up. And then I'm gonna scroll down to my drop zone and click here once. And what I need to do with the drop zone is hover over any graphic or image, and that will be the image that I'll choose to kind of overlay over the top. So you can see, because we positioned it um, and before, it's kind of applied it in the right spot. We can click apply, just press done here. And now, as we move through, we'll follow the boat, okay? So we've created a simple um, circle there that's gonna follow the boat, but we could also add in other elements in here as well. So if I wanna add something more complicated um, to this, I can add uh, some text, for instance, to this particular circle as well. So I'm gonna come down to um, a couple of elements here. I'm actually gonna add a solid in here, so a custom solid, and I'm gonna make this red. Now we can crop down this solid under the video controls from the top, the bottom, and the left, and the right. And then if we come in here, I'm going to just hold down control and tap T to add in the basic title, which I can then reposition up to here. I'll then just type in some text here. So boat on a river, move this across the right. And then with all these selected, I'm gonna hold down shift to select all of these. I'm gonna right click and make a new compound clip. So if I come back to my boat here and scroll down to my drop zone, I can select this as my drop zone. Okay. And I will apply this to the clip. And now you'll notice that on the clip, we have a little bit of uh, cropping there and we need to kind of fix that a little bit. So I'm going to pan this across until we can see everything and scale it down. And then once we've got that set up there, there's two places you can resize uh, graphics that you're overlaying. The one is here and then the other is under the tracked group controls. So we can increase the size of that and we can go beyond the, the scale of 32% that it's allowing us to go to. And I can then move the center point down here and we can get that again just in the right spot. And that new graphic now, where we've composited a number of layers together, will also track with that object. So once we've got the track set up, we can modify what we're actually applying to that track continuously. So you can kind of create these nice graphic overlays. And this doesn't necessarily need to be something you've created in Final Cut Pro. It could be a graphic overlay that you've exported out as a PNG from Photoshop or from Illustrator or even from Adobe InDesign and then placed into Final Cut Pro. And then using the drop zone controls, you'll be able to jump in and make that graphic or image or overlay that you've created, track the object in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's play this through now. So you can see we've got this real nice smooth track um, using the auto tracker. Um, we've overlaid a graphic that we've kind of quickly composited together in Final Cut Pro. I think also this shows how in Final Cut Pro you can create things that you might otherwise think you should create in Apple Motion or something like that. So with a few 
kind of select plugins, um, you can create some really neat effects in Final Cut Pro. And one thing we can see here as well, just finishing up, is that if we go and modify this graphic, but it remains similar um, to the, the original kind of scale and everything like that, then when we replace this graphic, so I've kind of thickened the line here a little bit and placed the type over it so it's a bit more legible on top of the video, then when we select that new drop zone and apply it to the clip, it actually matches up and we don't need to go through all the scaling options and everything as well. So I hope this tutorial review has been useful. Um, if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro um, or InDesign or Photoshop, then do leave them in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.